Bonjour, hola, and welcome to Resource Review. Today, we're looking at three resources for secondary modern foreign languages. A series of pupil and teacher resources. Un tortue. Très bien, une tortue. Très bonne prononciation, Ben. Very good pronunciation on that word. A book focusing on thinking skills. Here we've got Oni Sabato, Martina, Mio Fratello, Giocaria, Calcio. And a residential trip to France. Will our panel of experts say oui or non? To find out, keep watching Resource Review. Recommending today's resources, we have Adam Cook. Adam is MFL advisor to Norfolk Local Authority. Joining Adam is Judy Hawker. Judy is MFL teacher at Patcham House School and lead professional in Brighton and Hove. Alongside Judy, we have Kate Townsend. Kate is a former secondary school head of MFL and now secondary strategy manager and learning and teaching advisor at Stoke-on-Trent Local Authority. So welcome to you all. Thanks very much for coming. Adam, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. Let's begin with your first choice of resource and it's the Expo series. Can you tell us about this resource and why you chose it? Well, very good question, Hermione, because um, I'm sure various colleagues of my professional colleagues would be astounded that I've come on here to talk about a textbook-based <laughs> resource, but I have because I think it is probably one of the best that's been written for a very long time. Um, there is a textbook with it, but there's more to it than that as it's well, It's there? based around a textbook, but you get a teacher's guide and you get CDs to do listening activities and you get extra resource material for assessment and extension and so on. I like like it because it's taken a very communicative approach in its outlook, but it's tried to combine in aspects of the MFL framework, which is looking at developing pupils' thinking, getting kids to make connections in language, um, and for that reason, well, I think it's probably one of the best out there. Okay, well thank you very much. Before we go any further, let's have a look at it in use in the classroom. We visited Bradley Stoke Community School in South Gloucestershire, where language teacher Severine Brinster is using it with a Year 7 class avec une activité d'écoute. This afternoon in the classroom, I used um, Expo 1. The resource consists of a teacher's book, a pupil's book, um, two workbooks for the pupils, and an assessment file and a resource file, and an OHT file. Also, um, there is a CD-ROM um, that you can buy as well. Je m'appelle Makiko. This was the first lesson I, I did on animals with the pupils. I used the listening exercise, which I think was good, and it, it was quite fun because the students hear the first part of the word. Serre, Tom? En français? En français, Emily? Serpent, oui. Alors, vous allez écouter. And then they've got to write the second part, so they have to identify which animal it is. And I think in terms of spelling, that's really good for them because like you can encourage the brighter students not to use the sheet and to try to um, understand, guess the pronunciation of the word. Un tortue. Très bien, une tortue. Très bonne prononciation, Ben. Very good pronunciation on that word. Well um, and with the lower ability students, you can just say, look at the sheet and try to identify which animal it is. It does support the teacher quite well, I would say. Um, it gives you ideas for plenaries and starters, which I think is really good. And you've got the pages to support this in, in the resources file. But other times, I find that the starters sometimes are not pushing the students enough. So I'm, get, I'm kind of um, using the idea, but having to make like a paper on my own for the students to be a bit more challenged. To, to be using the Expo resources at Key Stage 3 for Year 7 is good, but I would say it's, it's probably more suited to a lower ability group. The teacher can always differentiate, there's no doubt about it, but the reason why you buy a textbook is because that you have you know, less work and, and the students can work a bit more independently. Adam, some negative points raised by the teacher there. What's your reaction, having seen it in use in the classroom? Well, I like what they were doing there, which was getting kids to, to guess the pronunciation of, of the animals, which is a major aspect of the Key Stage 3 framework, which is looking at engaging kids with sound patterns. Um, I didn't agree with her when she said it was more aimed at lower ability. There's a vast amount of differentiated resources there. But I will make one point, mm. right? I mean, these are a series of resources 
I don't believe you're supposed to, to go from page to page to page to page in the textbook. That's not how they were written. It's about strategically looking at your own teaching, your own planning, and seeing how you could take aspects from the textbook, from the resource materials, and include that in your teaching. OK. Judy, what are your thoughts on Expo? Um, I think as far as um, course books go, it's a good one. But I think the, uh, the start off with each double page spread, um, the actual resources there, I would put them up on a whiteboard and I would be using them in my own way. It's excellent for a modern foreign language department who needs a course book as a basis. There's some very good and helpful, uh, I think, teacher friendly um, guides where you know, set out the framework objectives, link those into the national curriculum. What, what are your thoughts, Kate? I suppose when the framework came out, first of all, I was quite excited by the idea that we would start planning again and we got this framework and we could use the framework to do our own planning. And I am concerned that these courses are taking that away from teachers and they don't need to engage with yeah. the framework objectives anymore. Mm. My other concern about these books that are badged up with Expo 1, Expo 2 and so on is what do you do at the end of the year if you've not had enough teaching time to cover Expo 1? It's tricky. How do the kids mm, actually feel about that? Yeah. Doesn't it then come back to the teachers or the heads of the department's own planning and own schemes of work? If they haven't got enough allocated time to get through the entire mm. book in that year, then you cut bits out. You look mm. at what you need to cover. A good defence there by Adam. <laughs> but I'm afraid we've got to move on now to the second resource. And this is a, another book. It's called Thinking Through Modern Foreign Languages. So, Adam, tell us about this resource. And again, what makes it stand out for you? Well, I get quite excited about um, something which is promoting um, engaging pupils in developing their thinking through learning modern foreign languages. And here we've got um, a pretty good resource which is full of ideas, um, full of things that you can modify. It comes complete with resources that you could photocopy straight away and use with pupils. But not only that, it contains instructions on how that should be used and why that should be used in a particular way. So I think it's kind of like a professional development tool for teachers to look at how they can learn more strategies. OK, well, before we open it up and see what our panel think, let's see whether this resource really can help teachers in the classroom. We visited Highcliffe School and Language College in Dorset to see teacher Nigel Campbell use one of the strategies with his Year 10 Italian class. Okay, it's a resource called Thinking Through Modern Foreign Languages. In a nutshell, I would say it's to do with bringing some creativity into the modern languages classroom. Um, it gives you uh, a whole range of different strategies that you can use in the modern languages classroom. I chose the one on taboo, there are other things on storytelling, there are things on uh, mysteries, etc. And through that particular strategy, it gives you devices of how you could perhaps teach um, some of your contents but with a slightly different focus and a different methodology. It gives you some quite useful pointers actually on how you should direct the progress once pupils have gone into groups etc and possible prompts or helps that you might give the students. I started off by looking at the rationale and the rationale told me that the idea was to help students to develop the communication strategies and competence and also to allow them to use the target language creatively and imaginatively. Now, we did that through, again, how the book tells me that I should be teaching them how to form a sentence, which we saw them doing, and importantly, where they should put a verb and what they should do with it. So there were all sorts of questions coming out in class about, can I use this verb, will that fit? A couple of them, had, uh, one group had found the verb socializzare, which means to socialize, at the back of the book, which we'd never used before, but they were able to apply in the correct context. And there were also, we, we reinforced issues such as link words, connectors, opinions, um, some of them even went into different tenses. So from that starting point that the resource gave me, then it lets us fly a bit really to use it to our, to our own devices. We've been given these verbs and we've got to choose one. We've got to make up a sentence without using it. So here we've got ogni sabato mattina mio fratello giocare a calcio, which means every Saturday morning my brother plays football and so we read out to the class in a minute and they've got to guess which verb we've used. Thinking through modern foreign languages is a really useful resource because it gives you new aspects of creativity that you can introduce into, the, into your classroom. It includes a wide range of methodology, it gives you some help with resources, um, it's very, very clearly laid out what you have to do.
Teachers would not find something to be able to introduce work with. It would be used for consolidation or to use prior knowledge in a more creative way or to put it into a different context. This is perhaps rather ironic for a modern languages resource, but it's very wordy. If um, there was a little less description and it was put more succinctly, that would make it easier for a busy teacher. What would you say to the slight criticisms that it is very wordy? Perhaps, I mean, oh, looking at yeah. it, not, I agree. not I really mean, in inspiring. I mean, for lower attainers, uh, maybe, and even mid to lower attainers, then some of these activities would need to be drastically modified right. to maybe, you know, less language. But still the principles could apply because lower attainers can think at high levels in the way that higher attainers can. It's just maybe they wouldn't have the base of language at their disposal. Okay. Kate, what do you think of thinking through modern foreign languages? Um, I'm interested in how this book fits with the other books in the series. There are books on geography, history, and RE, so I was very pleased to see the MFL one come out. But I think it's powerful for children when those links are made across the curriculum. So I would hope that MFL teachers would be planning with their colleagues in those other subject departments. Okay. Mm. Judy, thinking about th thinking through modern foreign languages, mm -hmm. what do you think? I think that um, it's, a ref it's a very refreshing um, set of resources to use with uh, pupils. My daughter recently said to me, recently did GCSE, and she said, I am so bored with talking about myself. Mm. And this particular resource doesn't talk about yourself at all. You talk about other people. For example, you might have a Venn diagram where you've got to discuss what characteristics Homer Simpson and David Beckham share. You know, that's the sort <laughs> of really. thing that comes out. So it's constantly talking about other people, and I think in a very creative and imaginative yeah. way. Well, thank you very much. Now let's move on to Adam's third choice of resource, and this is something a bit different. He's recommending a school trip to Chateau Beaumont. Tell us about this resource. OK, well, this resource has um, been massively recommended by um, various colleagues that have taken pupils um, to Chateau Beaumont and had an, an absolutely brilliant time. The schools can tailor make what type of residential visit they want their pupils to have. Well, Judy, what did, do you like the look of Chateau Beaumont? Yes, I mean, I've looked at it several times and haven't actually gone there, but um, it's always been on my mind to do so. Um, do, you, do you think it offers something that perhaps other residential places aren't? I, I, like, um, I like the idea of having the, uh, you know, tailor-making mm. the visit um, for your pupils. But the other thing I like about it is actually its simplicity. There's not massive of different variations on offer, right. but what there is is very flexible and versatile. One last comment from Kate. What do you think of Chateau Beaumont? It looks terrific to me, mm. and it's Normandy dead easy to get to. <laughs> yeah, that's another point, actually. Yeah, that's yeah. going to be important for Absolutely schools. Absolutely, for schools, certainly. You could do it in a day. <laughs> OK, well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. But to recap, the three resources that we looked at were Expo, series of teacher guides, pupil activity books and CD-ROM from Heinemann Educational, Thinking Through Modern Foreign Languages, published by Chris Kington, and a residential trip to Chateau Beaumont. For more information about all of the resources that we've talked about today and to post your own comments about other resources for secondary MFL, go to our website, it's teachers.tv forward slash resource review. Or if you want to email us, resourcereview at teachers.tv. So I'd like to say a very big thank you to our panel, to Adam, to Judy and to Kate. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Resource Review. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.